Hello everyone, it's Benny, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a piston extender of any length you want. So this is just a technique I stumbled across when I was playing with piston extenders, and I, at least I have never seen anyone do it before, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. So, for sake of example, I've built an 8 piston extender, and again, this technique is applies to any length, so I could make a 15 piston extender if I really wanted to. But, just for example, I built 8, and I have this lever. So if you flip the lever, you notice it extends. Okay, that's simple, that's the easy part. If I turn the lever off, though, then you'll notice the whole thing starts to retract. And it will slowly but surely work its way down the line and bring all the pistons and the block at the end back to the start. And there. And just to prove that it doesn't require the lever to be held, I'll just do a short pulse. And you notice it still works absolutely perfectly. So, just to look at some of the redstone that goes into it, it's actually a really simple repeater matrix that causes all this, even if it looks really complicated. But this this giant repeater matrix is actually built with a really simple pattern, and it's really easy to use, it's really easy to memorize, and if you use it, you can build a piston extender of any length you want to. So, let's go ahead and show you how to do this. Okay, so here's how you build it. First off, you place a block, and you place down your pistons. In this case, I'm just going to show you how to make a four-piston extender, but again, these techniques can apply to any number of pistons in a piston extender. So I'll just do one, two, three, four, and I'll place the block at the end. And this is the basis of my piston extender setup. So now that I've done that, I need to build the actual extension mechanism. This is the easiest part. First you place redstone like this. This redstone will extend the first piston. And now to extend the rest of them, you'll just need repeaters and blocks. So, I put a repeater here and a block here, and just keep doing this. And the number of repeaters that you'll need will always be one less than the number of pistons you have. So since I have four pistons in this extender, I have three repeaters. If I had eight pistons, I would have seven repeaters in this pattern. So nice and simple. If I flip the lever, they all extend, but of course they don't retract properly. So that's the next thing we'll have to do. But first I'd like to just mention a quick quirk in this system of extension right here. If you try extending pistons like that for any more than four pistons, for some reason you will need to have a free tick delay every three repeaters. So this one would need free tick delay, and then three repeaters down would need free tick delay. Or else it doesn't work. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but it needs to be there, they don't extend right. But in any case, now I've got all the pistons, let's build the retraction mechanism. So the way the retraction mechanism works is it does repeaters on the other side of the pistons. Now the number of repeaters you need here requires a small bit of math, so just bear with me. You'll need to take the number of pistons you have, so in this case 4, and subtract 1 from that. So 4 minus 1 is 3. Simple enough. Now, what you need to do is you need to take whatever that number is, multiply it times 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. So I need 6 repeaters. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now what I need to do is I need to actually, of course, set up the retraction mechanism. But it's not quite as simple because the retraction mechanism requires one space between each line. So I'm actually going to have to sort of expand this out a bit. And I'm going to do this by starting like this and just working my way across after I turn it back to day. Okay, we're back, it's day. And as I was saying, here's the way I like to separate these out. I like to have these three right here. I like them to go up, and I like to arrange it like this. That's just how I like to do it. And really it doesn't matter how you do this as long as they end up with space in between them, but this is the way I like to do it, and I did not put enough space there. So, yeah, so, so I like doing it like this, and then taking these, and going down like that. And this is pretty much all of them except for the two corner one, or the corner one I should say, and there. So now I'm just going to replace the ends of all these lines with repeaters, and you'll see why when I get to building the ret retraction mechanism. 
Okay, so now we have everything separated out. Good. So that's step one. But we still don't know how we're going to get all these repeaters to retract the pistons. So let me just quickly demonstrate how this works. And again, this pattern applies for every single um, every single piston extender you can make. So, here, I have all the pistons laid out like this. How am I going to go about retracting them? Well, first off, I need this piston in, because if I retract this piston, then nothing's ever going to be able to get to this piston again. So my first move has to be grabbing this piston with this. Now I need to grab the block. So, I'm gonna, so I started here, now I'm going to move over one and grab the block. Okay. Now again, we're in that same situation. We have to retract this piston next, or else we'll never be, be able to get to it again. So I'm going to retract this piston with this. Now I need to get that one, so there, and there. So I start with one, two, and then one, two, three. And then lastly, we need to do the same thing with this one. So one, two, three, four. So in all, I flipped did one, two, then I did one, two, three, and then I did one, two, three, four. Notice the pattern? And that's exactly the same pattern we're going to use to retract all the pistons. Except, instead of using levers, we're going to use repeaters. So, to start off with, we just need a redstone in front of all of these. So there. And now we need to actually set up the repeaters. And the pattern of repeaters is pretty much the same thing, except in reverse, because the signal will be traveling from this direction to the to here. So we will want the first few actions will actually be all the way down here, and the last few actions will be all the way up here. And that's why the pattern's in reverse. So, here's how the pattern goes. You start here, and you connect them like this. One, two, three. And if I add three ticks of delay, then what this should do is, if I power this, you'll notice it's doing that exact same last bit of pattern. I send a pulse fruit, actually. Yes, yeah, so you got the exact same last pattern. So, that's the first part, but now we need some repeaters so that this next layer does not conflict with this layer. So, we'll add more repeaters, and it's actually a little bit more for timing, but it also helps with that. So now we add repeaters. Now what we do is we're going to do the next one, so our, our first part was doing these two, then we moved over two and did these, these three. So it's actually two over from this. So, what we're going to do is we're going to track the three, so one, two, three. And, now I need to add repeaters again. And, lastly, what we need is we need to connect these last two, so like this. And of course, all these side repeaters need to be on three ticks of delay. And that's how you set it up. If you need an easy way to remember it, then all you need to know is you start the first, you take the number of pistons you have and subtract one, and you count that out, one, two, three. Okay, then you go back to the first one, and on the next layer, you move over two, and just do one less, than, eh, you'll do one less repeater than the previous row, so one, two. Then I'll go back to the start, move over two, and then one. So it's a pretty simple pattern, all in all. And it's already getting night again, that's strange, okay. One second, I'll just get night to go away. Okay, we're back. So, now that we've all set this up, the next thing we need to do is we need to sort of adjust these, because even though we have... If I pull these out one more, even though we pretty much have five rows, we're only going to need three of them. So I'm going to destroy this row and this row, because we're only going to use Z's to control the pistons. And... Now all we have to do is pretty much just hook these up, because we're just going to go through these three rows in sequence. So, the way I like doing this is I like going here, adding two repeaters on four ticks of delay, then connecting that, and then adding three repeaters on four ticks delay, and connecting that, and for the next four repeaters on four ticks, five repeaters on four ticks, and so forth and so on. And that ultimately gives us just one single line we can use to power the retraction circuit, assuming we have a pulse. So if I just quickly do this, and add a pulse, you'll be able to see our retraction circuit is working. So there, we've successfully built a retraction circuit using the matrix technique. 
Now the only thing left to do is we need to get this row to somehow be powered when this turns off. And that's actually a lot easier than it sounds. So the first thing I'm going to do is just add a repeater here. I don't really know why I like adding a repeater at the start, but I do. I'm just going to bring the redstone all the way around. And I'm going to see how far that goes. Okay. So I've got, at least I've got the redstone power over here. But the way I'm going to decide whether or not we are going to power that wires with a monostable circuit, because we both need a pulse and we need edge detection, and a monostable circuit offers us both a pulse and edge detection. So I'm going to bail just a simple monostable circuit. So redstone wire, power, and this is pretty much your standard, well not quite, but it's almost your standard monostable circuit. You see things like this all the time. So there you go. It's, again, standard monostable circuit design. As soon as this torch turns off, it will keep powering this. But once power goes away from here, then this torch will turn off, enabling this torch to turn on for, as you can see, three ticks. And after three ticks, the torch will turn back off. So it'll just send a very brief pulse. And at the same time, it will only activate when power goes away from this torch. So it's exactly what we want. And other than just one more repeater for timing, since we have three repeaters here. Whoops. Oh. Yeah, other than that, we have everything we need to complete this. So, with that, I just need to flip the lever. Everything extends. If I turn the lever off, everything retracts. So there you go, that's how you build a piston extender of any length you want. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.